Hi everyone, welcome to Cooking with Bay. I'm your host, Lindsay, and today we are going to learn how to make our own cooking fat. Now this is to replace butter, it is to replace olive oil, or hopefully you guys aren't using any seed oils, but this is definitely to replace that because it is way more nutritious and super healthy fat for you. And I am making this from bison suet, which renders down into something maybe you may have heard as tallow. So join me in this process, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell too to follow along, comment below. Let me know if these recipes are doing well in your kitchen, but we are making tallow as well as you get some bonus extra crispies. You may have heard of tallow. It's actually made from fat or fat trimmings from different ruminant animals, such as beef or lamb or even bison, which is what I have here. But it's also made from suet, and suet is the fat around the kidney, and this is bison suet. And so if you're going to make a homemade tallow, I believe the suet is the most nutritious of the fats, higher in vitamins and minerals, as well as it contains less of a beef smell with the finished product. Okay, so here's what you need. It's very simple, bison suet. And I have a link down below as to where you can source this. You can also source beef suet um, or lamb suet, doesn't matter, this, the process is the same. But, you know, for ease of the matter, check the link down below and use from my quality sources, which this is 100% grass fed from North Star Bison. So I really do quality sources as, if it wasn't grass fed and if they're fed grain, corn or soy, um, it's mostly stored in the fat. So I really, really like to choose 100% grass fed for this. Okay, so this is what your suet looks like. Sometimes it comes in pieces and depending on who you source it from, um, sometimes it could come in a whole block. So what I like to do is because it renders down easier when you cut it into pieces. So take a handy quality knife because using a <laughs> not a good sharp knife can be annoying. Anyways, you just chop it into little pieces here. The smaller you break it down, the more the fat will, or the quicker the fat will render and the more evenly. So this is the suet and this is something, you know, beef that kind of got in the way <laughs> or muscle meat. So it's up to you. You could toss it in there, but I typically just toss it on the side, maybe give it a treat to my dog or maybe a treat for me later, toss it in my eggs in the morning. So um, I just leave that out of the tallow. Why tallow instead of any other fat? Well, it's just because it's a healthier option. It's more nutrient dense. It's good for anti-inflammatory properties, good for heart health. It's a great source of fat. It also has a really high smoke point. So for those of you cooking on the stove top or, you know, in the oven at higher temperatures, it doesn't, um, it's a really stable fat. So it doesn't oxidize and, you know, cause any potential health risk. So I love this. And I like making it homemade from scratch because one, it's more economical, honestly. It's just way cheaper than you would to buy it um, in the store. And plus I'm always, once again, concerned about the quality. But also, um, you it yields a lot and you can use it for lotions and um, it's great for you know skin and, and compatible with, with just skin health as well. Um, and you can just use it for so many different things and there's a lot that come out of, that comes out of it. Okay, great. So I finished chopping the suet. Nice, kind of small, little cube-like things. Therefore, it would render into a liquid a bit easier. There'll still be some little pieces left in there, but you know we can either just strain it out or keep it in there, depending on how you like your tallow. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna toss these into a pot. Let's go. Okay, so I don't think I said this earlier, but this was two pounds of bison suet. So what I will do is I will melt it in a four quart deep pot, like so. This is from 360 Cookware, all stainless steel. Love this pot. This is probably my most used <laughs> with during my cooking shows and all the things that I cook with uh, the four quart. But I also just cook for me. However, this two pound um, beef suet will be rendered down into tallow that can definitely feed 
um, a family for weeks and weeks on end. Anyways, so I will put the stove on medium right now. We'll have the pot heat up just a little bit. Once that heats the pot, then we'll add the suet. Great, so it looks like the pot is definitely heated up. Then just grab all these things and drop them in. Okay, like so. And I kind of wait, I, I sort of fill the pot a little bit. I wait a little bit until it renders down a bit and I toss more in. So you'll probably put it on about low or medium to low for, depending on your stove. Again, like everybody's stove is a little bit different. I know that and the quality of your pans too. So, or your pots rather. So just kind of gauge, go from there and then see if you need to higher it, lower it. Then we'll stir frequently. So I like to, cause this is fat and it will melt soon. So just kind of constantly stirring. So we're gonna take a sneak peek at what's going on here. So this has been rendering for about maybe 10 minutes now. So as you can see, you know, the fat is starting to become a liquid. It's just coming off. And then you can see in the bottom there where it's all starting to render. So this will just continue to render. And I like to keep stirring it in the beginning so that, you know, you can just kind of rotate it and it evenly gets the heat around the fat to hopefully melt in a balanced state, but also so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Then once you get sort of that liquid bottom going, then you can cover it and just sort of keep it on your medium low. I might even put that a little bit higher since the liquid has started to um, raise at the bottom. And then I can feel comfortable letting that go without constantly stirring it. Notice I've had an outfit change with a nice <laughs> apron because we're dealing with straight up fat here and fat can spit um, and it can just, yeah, start to boil. So check it out. Here it is rendering down like that. All of that goodness. See that? So we're going to continue rendering it. I did turn down the stove just a little bit more again because it's just all fat and so when you have it on any heating element it just sort of tends to spit up and we just want a low and slow render so as you can see there's a lot of these fat pieces that didn't render down i like to call these just the extra crispies which are super yummy as little snacks you could toss them in on top of your burger on top of eggs and so i keep these but i strain them right so this is your towel essentially. Great, so we are done with this. Now, time for the potentially messy part, but I've done it a couple of times, so I hope that I become a pro. However, it could still get messy. So this is what I do, is essentially I take a ladle that has a strainer, or you know, I'm sure you can kind of MacGyver something and figure it out in your home, but what I'll do is I, I'm taking these crispy pieces out and just putting them in a separate bowl so that all I have left in the pot will be the liquid. Hey, look at these fun things and crispies. I'll throw on your next meal a little topper too. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna set these to the side. I'm sure you can make something epic with these. Yes. I I'm agreeing with myself. I'm just trying to think creatively while I'm telling you to like what else you could use it for. I mean, I'm going to be making deviled eggs next, like mix it in there. Um, anyways, I got a bowl and then I'm going to put the strainer over here for a second sort of strain because there's some pieces in there too. Again, you can keep them in if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and um, move them over. Let me get to these mittens. Strain here. Once the pot cools, you'll get some of these crispies in the tallow and yeah, you're licking your lips already. She's like, I know what's up. Okay. I 
I like to take these mason jars. Again, a funnel that will help minimize the messiness. And then I will pour this into here like so. So I will leave a little bit of room, Oop, maybe that much room so that when it solidifies, it just um, expands a little bit more. And depending on where you store it, whether you store it in your freezer or your fridge, or personally, I actually store it in my cupboard. And I actually think this is from my experience of buying tallow and making tallow. I really feel like tallow is shelf stable when the quality is there. And so buying from sources like North Star Bison, or even I get some from White Oak Pastures or Hackamore Ranch or things like that. Um, the quality really shines through when it's like shelf stable. And I know it, there are recommendations to put it in the fridge um, or even your freezer, but I haven't really ran into an issue and it's not like it stays there for years and years either. So, um, it's really in the eye of the beholder. So again, if you are going to put in your freezer or your fridge, just save some room. Okay. There we go. Check that out. And tallow. See? Not too much sweat in the kitchen. That was easy. It was just really babysitting the rendering process. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining. I hope you guys make this animal fat, super nutritious cooking oil or fat for your kitchen, for your lotion, whatever your needs are, but it's super yummy and nutrient dense. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell on my channel so that you can get updated with other recipes that are coming down the pipeline for you. They're really exciting, but for now, Guess who's gonna get a treat? Because they're dog friendly. Oh, that was a good catch. There we go. Extra crispies. Thanks for joining. <laughs>